Hey, guess who's back? It's me. Been a long time since I've posted something here on the DT Alpha Talkback blog, huh? Well, hopefully you missed me. Did you miss me? Please tell me you missed me. If you missed me, kiss me. All right, I'm kidding. Listen, it's been a long time since I posted something here, but now I have a whole new video series that I want to share with you, okay? I've been out doing all kinds of cool things, been on tour with Get Motivated All Year. Colin Powell, Sarah Palin, Rudy Giuliani, Michael Phelps, John Walsh of America's Most Wanted. And I've grown a lot, you know, over these months of this year that I've been on tour and, you know, learning and stretching and, and growing. And there's a lot of different things that I'm going to share with you. But what you're looking at right here is one of my new sweethearts. This is my brand new BMW X5M. And she weighs about two and a half tons. But she can go from zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds. Now, how in the world can something so big move so fast? Well, if you pop open the hood, you'll see that she has 555 horsepower underneath the hood. Wow, that's the power to move. Listen, whatever that financial objective is that you want to reach or whatever those heavy debts are that you seem to have in your life that feel like they won't go away, I'm here to tell you that those debts can go away and whatever that financial project or financial objective is that you want to hit, you can actually hit it. But how do we do that? What we need to do is increase the money-making horsepower of our financial engines. That's what it is we need to do. So what I'm committed to doing here is over the next few weeks, share with you some new videos. And these videos are clips from various workshops that I've been doing. And I believe there's a lot of good information there that you'll be able to learn from. Obviously, you're going to be the one to decide that. But there's a lot of clips that I want to share with you from both the mechanic side of making money as well as the mindset and the psychology side of being able to make money. Hopefully, you'll get a lot of great value out of that. And as usual, while you're here, I want you to talk back to me because I'm back I got my schedule together, a whole lot of great stuff that I want to share with you. I certainly missed you, so I hope you missed me. So it's time to get this thing on. Are you ready? Ready to increase your money-making horsepower? I'm sure ready to help tune you up and help you to optimize how you go about creating your money and creating your income. Let's eliminate that debt and let's increase the amount of money that you're making, all right? So to get started, I have today's clip for you, all right? So kick back, relax. It's not going to be long, but I truly hope that it's going to be meaningful. So you ready? Let's get started, and I'll see you next time. But here's why this is important. How many are familiar with the iceberg theory of change? How many are familiar with icebergs? Yeah. All right, very good. At least we got a common ground. This is our iceberg, at least our make-believe iceberg. This is the water level. It's stated that what we see of the iceberg is only 17%. 17% of the iceberg is on the water level. Above the water level, we can see it. The other 83% is below the surface. All right, follow me here. I want you to write these initials in here. ITJAR, I-T-J-A-R. Now, just like I-T-J-A-R, okay, ITJAR. Now, just like with an iceberg, what we see of it is 17%. What we see of a person's life, their results, is only 17%. That's what we see. You can tell a person's results, financially, physically, spiritually, emotionally. You can see all this stuff. We can't hide that. We can't hide what we really believe because we walk it, we live it, we breathe it. You know, it's really hard to hide a belief. You can talk about one belief in a conversation, but trust me, what you truly believe, you live. It's a demonstration in your lifestyle, the language you use, how you talk, how you live. All that is a demonstration of what we really believe. So here's the thing. Many people see results that they have, financial, physical, whatever. It's like, I want to change those results. And we're told if we take new what? A, new what? New actions, we can change the results. Right? Ever heard that before? Now, how many of you ever had results in your life that you didn't necessarily like, and you started to take new actions, but then all of a sudden, something ain't happened, something didn't happen fast enough, or something wasn't right, and you snap back to the old actions, and the results <laughs> ultimately didn't improve. That ever happened before? Yes or no? Yes. And see, here's the thing. Do we need to take new actions? Yes. But what we have to do is we have to drop below the surface and get to the root of what is going to ultimately change the results, even with you being here, what's going to ultimately change the results financially? Because obviously you want to change it financially for whatever that's going to open up for you. You know, for Mary, we know, we know what that is. For you, it's going to be something different. So what we have to do is we have to come down here to the root. And here's the thing. It all starts with your identity. All starts with your identity. Let me tell you why these actions don't stick. And the reason why is this. We are never able to do, be, have, or become anything that is inconsistent with our identity. 
Your identity is the total dictator of play. Who you believe you are and what you believe you can become dictates everything. So you try and you struggle and wrestle with new actions that are inconsistent with your identity and the actions snap back because it's hard, difficult, nearly impossible to sustain actions that are inconsistent with who you see yourself being. Are you following it? Yeah. So if we want to take the new actions to get the new results, what we need to do is alter our identity. Problem is, is that most people, who you are today is not who you really are. It's who you allowed yourself to become by virtue of what other people have said about you. For example, Mary, you're Chinese. No. Don't smile at me. I said you're Chinese. You're Chinese. Okay, we don't forget that. Cindy, you're Chinese. Yeah. Are you offended that I called you Chinese? No. no. Mary, are you offended that I called you Chinese? Yeah. Why aren't you offended? Because you know you're not Chinese, right? Right. You understand, you know you're not Chinese. See, here's the thing. They know they're not Chinese. They know who they are. The reason most people get offended when somebody calls them stupid and idiot or something like that is because they don't know who they are. So they're like, well, maybe it's true. Are you following it? If you know who you are, nobody can offend you if they call you something outside of who you see yourself being. Are you understanding me? See, somebody calls you all kinds of degrading things, but you truly know who you are. You're not offended. See, I call them Cindy or Mary Chinese. We can laugh about it because it's, that's just it's ridiculous. Come on. It's equally ridiculous for you to get upset by somebody calling you something that you know you're not. You get offended. All of a sudden, you need counseling, and maybe you need to be medicated. <laughs> right? Because all these people are coming down on you. Listen to what they're saying about you. If you know who you are, it doesn't matter, does it? See, what happens is, is that a lot of us, we get trapped with this, this people-pleasing personality. We become a prisoner of people's praise. Our life is living to get the adoration of other people. It's what other people say about us. That's more important than what we say about ourselves. And remember this one thing. Never let what's most important to become a slave to what's least important. And let me tell you something. What's least important is what other think, people think about you. What's most important is what you think about yourself. Right? But most people's identities have become altered and totally disoriented because we are believing who we are based on what other people say we are. Or different mistakes that we made in our lives. But here's the thing. People that are successful, regardless of the degree that they achieve success, nobody lives a life that's free of mistakes. But people that achieve at a high level live lives that are freed from their mistakes. I mean, they don't make the mistakes, but they don't become a chain to it. They don't become a prisoner to it. It's a snapshot in time, the lesson is learned, and then we move on. We don't attach it to us and then drag that weight along with us, along with everything else. I remember I was watching the, the, the NBA playoffs, and Robin Hood hadn't come out yet. By the way, anybody seen Robin Hood yet? Yeah. So Robin Hood hadn't come out, and there was a trailer on, and I wasn't paying attention to the trailer, but I was listening, and then they said something that just stuck to me, and I just sat back in my chair, and I was like, wow. And I assumed the guy was talking to Robin Hood, and he asked a question. He said, are you ready to be who you are? I was like, man, isn't that phenomenal? Because see, here's the thing. Who we really are at our core is totally phenomenal. But who we allow ourselves to be and become is what's really pathetic. Because most of us are looking for other people to give, her, give us permission to live our lives. Most of some of you probably ask for permission to come here. Is it OK? Right? We ask for people to sign off and co-sign on our lives. Why in the world would you ask somebody that's broken, depressed to co-sign on you to have a better life? I mean, think about it. Does it make any sense? Most people will never give you permission to do something they won't give themselves permission to do. <laughs> so what we have to do is find out who are we really down here and take care of ourselves from an identity level. Because that right there is the core. If we don't alter who we see ourselves to be, forget what other people think you are, what other people have to say about you, forget about it. Who do you see yourself being? Because you're going to, oh, I want to be a multi-million and all this other kind of stuff. Be it. You have to see it here. You have to see it truly before it even manifests itself. And it has nothing to do with the labels that other people place on you. They can call you whatever it is they want, and they will. But if you have this oversensitivity to what they say about you, then chances are it's going to drag you down. It is going to poison you. Your system is going to become toxic.
And what's going to happen to your identity is that it will become altered and you will not be living your life. You will be living your life based on other people. I don't understand what I'm talking about. So at the heart of this game of total life, it doesn't matter what it is you pick, who you are and who you believe you can become is the total dictator of every single thing.